Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this Pac-Man shaped animation. Let's start by making a Pac-Man. So what is a Pac-Man? A Pac-Man basically is in a shape of a circle, but it's only three quarters of a circle, right? And we can use an arc function to draw that shape. So an arc function takes in a total of six arguments. The first two are the x and y coordinate of the center of a circle. The third and the fourth are the width and the height. And then the fifth and the sixth are the angle, the starting angle and the ending angle of that arc. We're going to start by drawing this arc or this circle in the center of the canvas. And I want to use, I want to provide 0, 0 as the first two arguments. So I'm going to use the translate function to translate that origin point to the middle of the canvas, which is width divided by 2 and then height divided by 2. And then I'm going to give it a size of how about 300. And I'm going to give the arc starting angle and ending angle to be 0. And how about let's start with 90. And because I'm using degrees, I need to also set the mode to angle mode. All right. OK, and I can also do no stroke to only get the shape. And as you can see here, from angle 0 to angle 90, it is in the clockwise direction, right? So with the Pac-Man shape, we would need from the starting point plus 270 degrees. So I'm going to change that to 270. All right. But actually, in the final animation, the starting angle is not always at 0. So how about we give it a variable? I'm going to call it starting arc. And I give it, for right now, I give it just 0. So we can do starting arc here, and then starting arc plus 270, right? And right now we get the same thing, but if we change this to let's say 90, then we get different position, right? Perfect. And then now, if we want to move this Pac-Man, all we have to do is add angle to these two components here, right? And then we also need to increment it by a certain speed. And now the Pac-Man is moving in the clockwise direction. Let's put this code in a class. So click this arrow here, a plus sign, and then create file. We're going to create a new JavaScript file, and I'm going to call it pacman.js. Before we start writing a class, let's go to index.html, and then we're going to copy this line of code, and then write pacman.js. And this is basically the name of the new file that you just created. And this is how you integrate a new JavaScript file into your program. All right, let's go back to pacman.js. I'm going to start writing a class by using the word class. And then let's name the class pacman. And then I'm going to give it three functions. Constructor functions, display, and then the last one is move for moving the pacman. All right, so what should be in the constructor function? First, I want to give it an x and y position because we're going to have a grid of pacmans, right? Now I'm going to set this dot x to x, this dot y to y, and then let's go back to sketch.js. We need starting arc and angle. So starting arc is not going to be a constant at 180. It's going to be an argument that we give. So let's do starting arc. I'm also going to also create ending arc and give it starting arc plus 270, right? So that's the shape of a Pac-Man. And then also let's give an angle and initialize it at 0. All right, so in display, what we need is this whole set of code. Actually, this angle will be in move. So instead of translating the shape to the middle of the canvas, we'll translate it to this dot x comma this dot y. And then this will have to be a size global variable. We'll need to create that. And then this will be this dot starting arc plus this dot angle. And then this, we have already give it a name of this dot ending arc and then this dot angle. All right. 
All right, so let's just try creating one Pac-Man object. So let's go back to sketch.js. First, actually, let's create a variable call size, a global variable, set it to 300. And then I'm going to create a variable called P, and P is going to be a new Pac-Man. And we will need width divided by two and height divided by two for the position that we want to translate it to. And then the last thing, is we need starting arc. So how about we give it at zero for now? And then now we just need to call the display method. All right, and then we want to also move it. Perfect. Next, let's create a grid of Pac-Mans. So we need to declare a few more variables. The first one is columns, second one is rows, and then instead of just one object P, let's do Pac-Man's and set it as an array. And then inside here, we first want to calculate the number of columns, which is going to be width divided by size, and then rows will be height divided by size. Now we're gonna use a nested for loops to fill in this array. And it's gonna be a 2D array because it's gonna be a grid of rows and columns of Pac-Man's. So, for let i equals to zero, i less than calls, i plus plus. For let j equals to zero, j less than rows, j plus plus. First, we need to populate the Pac-Man arrays with 1D empty arrays. And then inside the inner for loop, that's where we will be creating new objects. So we can just copy this, then we'll delete this. And then we will give it I times size and J times size. And this way we can have a grid of Pac-Man that are spaced out evenly with the size of size. Why don't we give the starting angle at zero for all of them for now? And then we can copy this nested loop. And then we want to call the display method on all of the object. Ooh. Okay, first the size is way too big, so how about we give it just 50? And then as you can see, all of them are here because we forgot two important functions, push and pop, when we do any kind of transformations. So we're gonna put push here, and then we're gonna put pop here. So basically the push and pop functions, push saves this transformation, which is to translate it to a certain location on the canvas. So this.x and this.y. And then after it does that translation, then it returns back to the original setting where the origin point is back at the top left corner of the canvas before it goes into the nested for loop again and do another translation for a different object. So if we do this, Perfect, so now we have a grid of Pac-Man. But we have to tweak two things. The first thing is, I actually want the size of these Pac-Mans to be a little bit smaller. So how about we subtract it by offset? And then let's come here, and then we need to also declare offset, and how about we set it to five? Okay, and then we want to also move everything a little bit to the right and a little bit down. And that is by half the size for both X and Y. Perfect. All right, and then now we also should call the move function, right? All right, so now all the Pac-Mans are moving in the clockwise direction. Okay, so before we move on, how about we change the colors a little bit. I want my background to be this blue. That looks nice, okay. Next, as you can see, I'm gonna stop this first. As you can see here, all the starting angles are at the same location at angle equals to zero, but from the final animation, that's not going to be the case. What we want is we want each of these four Pac-Mans in each group here to actually have this square negative space in between, right? So to do that, we need to write a conditional statement. If a Pac-Man is in an even row, and within that, if a Pac-Man is in an even column, then the starting angle will be at 90, else it will be at 180. And then if a Pac-Man is in an odd row, 
And then within that, if a pack minus in an even column, then we want the starting angle to be at zero. Else, it will be at 270. So let's do that. So I'm going to set a new variable and let's call it starting angle. And then we're going to start by writing a conditional statement. So to figure out if a row or a column is even or odd, we can use this expression. So like I said before, we want to check if it's in an even row, right? So J is row. This is an expression called modulo. So how this works is that we basically divide this number by this number. And the result of this expression is how many remainders are left from this division. So for example, J is three. 3 divided by 2 is, is 1 time, right, with a remainder of 1. So the output of this is 1. And that means that that number is an odd number, right, because there's a remainder. So this expression, if you do something mod 2, if an output is 0, so you know that it's an even number, and if it's not 0, then you know that it's odd. So this expression asks if this row is even, then we want to actually do another, right? So if this column is even, then we want to set starting angle to be at 90. Else, we want starting angle to be at 180. All right, so that's one. And then else here, this else is for if it is an odd row, right? Then if I mod two equal to zero, then set starting angle to zero, else, set it to 270. I hope I got this right. And then we can just put starting angle in here. Let's try that. All right, so that's the shape that we want. And now how about we move it as well? Perfect, that looks nice. This looks really nice already, but I want to give it a little bit of an extra oomph to this animation. And that has to do with its easing motion. So right now, how it is moving is at a constant speed, right? Because we are moving it at one degree at a time every time the draw loop is called. So let's go back to pacman.js. Instead of moving it by one or a constant speed, I want to move it in a different motion. So if you come to this page here, easings.net, basically it has all of these different motions. So if you look at the motion of this, so this is the sign function. So if you look at this object on the right, it's not moving at a constant speed, same as this one, right? You can see that it slows and it speeds up towards the end, while this one, it starts fast and then it slow down at the end. So there are all these functions that we can use to create a cool easing motion. So each of these comes with an equation. So for example, ease in quad, where you start slow and then you go faster towards the end. There's an equation which is y equals to x squared. And all of these functions have different equations. So I actually have created a JavaScript file already and I call it easing.js. So you can look at my code afterwards and then copy it into your own file. Let's first create a file called easing.js and then make sure that you go to index.html file to integrate this file into your program, right? So come to this line of code and then copy and paste this, change the name to easing.js and here are the equations that I have already put in here. So how would you use these functions? So basically, you have to come to your class here, and then within the move function, you want to change this angle by the return results of those functions. I did a video on linear interpolation, and it comes with an equation y equals to min plus a of interpolation times the range. So what that is basically is, y will be equals to the minimum amount or the starting amount plus the amount of interpolation that ranges between zero and one. And you want to times it by a range, a range that you want to interpolate your point to. And the range is basically just the max minus min, right? So in our case, y will be equals to min, the minimum point 
which is angle zero because we want to rotate from angle zero to angle 360 right which is exactly what we are doing here by incrementing it by a constant speed the amount that we want to interpolate it will be between zero and one and so this amount here will change between zero and one every time the draw loop is called and then the range that we want which is max minus min so max we want to rotate up to 360 right and then min is zero so essentially all we need is the amount times 360 right and y here will be this dot angle so we don't need this part so what is the amount so actually let's set the amount here starting at zero and as i told you we want to move the amount from zero to one to do that, we also need to write a conditional statement that says if this dot amount is more than one, then we want to reset the amount to zero. And then else, then this is where we increment the amount. So how about we increment it by 0 0.1? By doing this right now, basically, we're just moving it linearly. So let's just run it. And then this has to be this dot amount. And then it's moving a little bit too fast. So as you can see here, even though we have this whole expression, right, and this conditional statement, but what we're doing is exactly the same as what we did previously, which is moving it linearly. So it is just moving at a constant speed. But the cool thing about what we can do now is that instead of using this dot amt amount here times it by the range, we can now use all of the easing functions that we have in this file. So for example, if we use ease in quad function, right, all we need to do is that we just put in ease in quad here and give it an argument of this dot amount, right? Because ease in quad will return a value between zero and one as well. And then we just time it by the range. And then if we click run, do you see that? It starts slow and then it ends faster. And that is still quite abrupt. So there's another function called ease in out quad. Let's try that one. So with the ease in and ease out here, it starts slow and then it ends slow and it speeds up in the middle. So you can play around with all of these easing functions that I already have in the easing.js file, or you can go to different websites and find different functions that gives you a nice easing motion, or you can come up with your own. So this is a very fun way to create animations that might start out looking a little bit simple, but by adding some easing motion, you can make it a little bit more complex and interesting to look at. Give this one a try.